I do in terms of training the judges. So you'll essentially know what a judge knows um, and then can use that to your advantage, um, both in preparation and then also the, the, the day of the event, the days of the event. Um, vice presidents of, of, of technical companies. Um, and really, in general, what we try to do is get, you know, get those, uh, <coughs> say, more influential people that, uh, number one, are looking to hire you, um, when you either when you are out of school or if they're educators, they might want to get you to their college. And so another way you can look at this as a networking opportunity for you, in addition to the judging, you can, you know, um, learn more about a particular company or university uh, in, in addition to, to showcasing your team. Um, but so my, my point is there's a wide, usually a wide variety of um, people that we recruit. So um, you can't just learn one thing and then just you, you know hammer that home. You need to have a, a good broad approach to what you share with the judges. Um, in terms of kind of what I do for training for the judges, the night before is when they get trained. If there's no like online course or or, or anything like that, it's a, it's a really nice dinner. If you want to come back and be a judge, you can get in on that. Um, but um, we, we basically go over the schedule. So the schedule is, I mean, it's the same schedule as yours, a little less because we don't have to come in, you know, Thursday or anything like that. It's Friday morning, um, you know, we'll come down for the opening ceremonies and then usually typically watch it for the first couple matches. Um, because one of the, you know everyone's in the, in the crowd for the opening ceremony we want you to get back to your pits before we can go interview you um, so we usually watch a couple of matches and then go out and we break up into groups right so we have um, excuse me, we have you can imagine like 50 teams we try to send um, pairs or threes or fours of judges to see about 10 or so teams Friday morning, um, and then we get back in caucus. Now those groups of, you know, two to four judges will try to assign a machine person and a team person, right? So um, that way, that way you can get all all the different parts of your team in that quick interview. And, it, and it's really that. It's really a quick. We come to your pit station. Um, uh, you know, we're wearing the blue shirts, so we're pretty easy to spot. Um, We'll start talking to whoever engages us. We might have to, you know, on some of the more timid teams, we might have to like go grab a kid out of the corner. Um, you know, oftentimes we might start talking to one of your mentors and not realize it because that person might be a college student or, or um, you know, just be young, younger looking than, than some of the students. So uh, I encourage you, if you are a mentor, or to tell your mentors. Hey, let me have the kids say about that because the judges really want to talk to the students. Um, I won't say we'll penalize you for it, but it's it's much more impactful if we hear the, the information from the students. Um, how, much, how much time does the judges <coughs> plan on spending getting to the It usually works out to 15 to 20 minutes, um, probably closer to 15. It's a really it's a really fast-paced schedule for us. Um, as you can imagine, it's fast-paced for you guys too, so you, you know how the, the day is on Friday. But uh, if you've been there, I don't know if anyone's a, a rookie yet here. But, um, so we usually got about 15 minutes. Um, you know, some teams are, they got all their data, their books, and, their, and, and they want to tell you, and they may take longer because, you know, none of us want to just walk away, but um, we may have to cut it short if you're, um, you, you know, if you're giving us a lot of good information. Um, typically, I mean, that interview is very just free form. We might have one person talk to your team people, and one person talk to your, um, you know, mechanical people, uh, machine people, or we may just talk to one spokesperson if that's how your team is set up. Um, I would encourage you to always have someone who can speak eloquently in your pits. Um, about your team and your robot uh, in terms of preparation. Um, it, sure, it sure helps a lot. Well, and in fact, three of the awards specifically have um, a criteria in them 
that says the team spokesperson can describe the innovation or the part or the creative feature. And so if your team spokesperson can't, like we may think something's really cool, but if you can't describe it, then, then you know, that certainly is a, not, a, not a positive um, thing. Um, so is it good to have, like, I don't want to say, not that the script out, but just kind of to keep it moving, kind of a quick, I don't want to call it elevator speech either, but between a, a you know, a, a dissertation and, and an well, elevator I mean, speak. Like, yeah. Like any, like yeah. Any, um, yeah. You know, a well-prepared interview. Right. Um, you want to try to guide it mm -hmm. towards what you want them to hear. Um, so, we'll talk, I mean, I'm kind of jumping right. all over here. Okay. We'll, so we'll talk about awards here for a second. Um, you know, if there are particular awards that you feel that your team is strong for, you certainly want to read the criteria for those awards and then highlight to the judges, you know, this, I mean, you, don't, you don't tell them directly, here's how we read the first bullet, here's how we read the second bullet. Um, you know, you, you can list that in sentences without saying, you know, here's how we read all the bullets, but, um, you know, but you basically, I feel like the, the criteria that we see on the first website are fairly broad. Mm -hmm. Are there like, are there finer points in the, in, from the judge's perspective? There really aren't. Okay. Uh, um, I'll get a little bit into that, you know, just some general, general thoughts. But, um, you know, especially, especially the, like the three, um, um, machine awards that are a little bit more based on sort of creativity and, um, you know, we're, there's a lot of latitude there. Um, I, I would encourage you that if you feel you have a unique feature, try to look around and see if other robots have that unique feature because then if you say, well, we got the only, uh, you know, tandem wheel drive here and we see three of them. <laughs> Those guys didn't look around too much. Um, but and again, those three, especially the, the spokesperson, is extremely important. Um, uh, on the two, the two quality and uh, industrial design awards, both of those, especially the quality, is predicated on no machine failures. So um, you know, expect that if something breaks, that you're going to be out. Um, unfortunately, you know, there's just so many good robots um, that. Sometimes it comes down to, to something as simple as, you know, you, you didn't work for half a match or, or, or something like that. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's just what happens. Um, so is that also, not necessarily a breakdown, but also fair for the robot to actually perform what it was designed to do? Um, so in other yeah, words, yeah. So in other words, you know, if the gripper can't grab the, right. the tube or what the game piece. So that's, really not well, that's a little, that's maybe a, you know, 1A. Okay. You know, 1 is mechanical failure. Right? Yeah. B is doesn't work as it's intended. Um, and, and sort of the next tier down would be things like um, you may have something cool, but it doesn't give you any advantage in the, in the game. You, you want to have, um, that, that's the way I won't give you a quality or industrial design. That would make you uh, the creativity, um, you know, but not necessarily that. Um, Quality or industrial design. Uh, industrial design, you know, well, I guess while we're here, industrial design, um, you know, we're looking for really clean machines, wiring, um, you know, well thought out, accessibility to panels, you know, nice welds, nice, and the same for the quality. Quality and industrial design are very similar. Um, the key with industrial design is um, that you actually planned it that way and then designed it that way. <laughs> Well, it's kind of hard to stumble upon quality without that, that planning as well, but, uh, you know, uh, you can think of, for industrial design, things like ISO 9000 and those kind of quality control measures kind of thing for industrial design or quality, really. Quality also extends to the pits. So a very nice clean pit, clean cart, organized, um, you know, no Mountain Dew cans and food wrappers. Uh, especially any safety issues, um, that'll that'll be, you know, be a, a very bad news for, for the quality of work for sure. Uh, so back back to the interviews. So you know we've, we've talked to you, we've gone out, we've seen 
hopefully every every team. Um, just one weird quirky thing that we do both at Buckeye and Queen Cities. We'll give you a dot. It's a little sticker. It's about this big. We'll ask you to put it on your sign. That that helps us know that we've been to visit you. So um, if you're at those two events, especially, I think we do it at all of them. It's like the first dot. Um, if we don't give you a dot, feel free to ask us for one because um, you know we want to make sure that we see every team. Um, another thing that I, I try to tell my judges to do is before they leave, ask you the question: Is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you want to tell me? Um, so always think about have like a running checklist in your mind. Here's the 15, seven points I want to tell them. Um, oh, I forgot number 37 and number 19. So I'm gonna go back and tell them. But um, you know, have a have a good idea of what you want to check off. Um, in terms of some of the more team-oriented awards um, and just trying to get the information of the judges, data really helps us. So if you say you mentored a first Lego League team, we're, we're going to think, we're not going to say it, but we're going to think every other team here mentors, mentors first Lego League team. If you say, um, you know, we mentor uh, four Le first Lego League teams, we, we spend about 30 hours a week, we've done this for four years, it's at 13 or 407 kids go through the program. Um, you know, those are sort of the kind of numbers that help us. Again, it's differentiating between, you know, awesome and awesomer. So, um, you know, you should be definitely be proud of what you're doing um, in terms of any of that mentoring or any of those, you know, fundraising, same thing applies to all those other things. Um, but, uh, you know, unless we get that information, hardcore, um, then we're not going to be able to, you know, necessarily work with that. <coughs> so, after the interviews are done, usually around lunchtime or maybe, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon, especially now that they've changed the, most of the awards to Saturday, we have a little bit more time and flexibility. Um, the judges will come back and what we'll do is nominate um, each group of judges will nominate one or two teams from the teams that they, they've seen for each of the awards, if they've seen anybody appropriate for those awards. So, you know, let's say I'm in group, group one. Um, I've interviewed everybody. I, I think, you know, I'm going to say, you know, 40-28 for, for quality and, and, and creativity. And 31-38 uh, for uh, maybe for engineering inspiration. Um, and, you know, um, uh, gracious professionalism, you know, any of those things. Um, 4269, uh, um, imagery and, and, and uh, industrial design, you know, those kind of So then each, all the judges will put these up on. It's a very scientific process we use, our powered software through large tear off sheets of paper <laughs> <laughs> to calculate the results, we'll put up these lists. And so we'll have roughly half a dozen, sometimes more, um, on each one of these lists, right? So there'll be 12 or whatever the number is lists um, of all these different candidates. So then the rest of our time, if we have any time left on Friday, um, well, we have, to get, we have to get a couple of awards done on Friday. So we'll have to do, I think, imagery's on Friday. I remember right? I can't remember. I can't either. There's one or two on Friday. Um, we'll, have, we'll get those done. What we'll do is then um, break up into different groups. We'll say, okay, you know, you're the vice president for Johnson and Johnson Controls. You're the dean of controls at UC. You go, guys. You guys go check out the controls nominated teams because that's your uh, area of expertise. And so we'll again focus down on just that list of teams that's been nominated by all the various, and we'll try to assign specific groups to then go kind of deep dive into those areas. So then those judges will go back out and talk to just the teams on their list. Hey, tell me more about this. You know, can you give me more details? How do you think that up? How often does it work? What's your you know, quality control processes? Whatever whatever the, the, the award is about. And so they'll, again, dive down in deep. So um, 
again, suggest that you always, always have a spokesperson if possible. Um, that's probably the number one thing that, you know, we'll, we'll make every attempt to come back and find you. Um, but if it's three, four, five times that we've come back, it's just frustrating. I mean, it's just human nature. I, I apologize for that, but we, you know, we're, we're trying to get the information out uh, out of the team, and so you know, we want to make sure that that we can do that. Um, so the, the judges go back out, they deep dive, and then we come back in, and each one of those lists is then rank ordered from one to n of of all the teams on the list by the judges who saw those teams. Uh, and then because we want to want to spread out the wealth, there's a lot of good teams to recognize. We then, if there's a conflict, let's say um, two different teams were, were uh, well, let's well, say um, one team was, was first place in three different teams. We're not going to give them all three of those awards. I know, it's a killer. <laughs> Um, so we'll, we'll have a little bit of discussion. Hey, are they head and shoulders above the second place team? Um, are they more mechanically oriented? So maybe we give them a mechanical award versus the team award. You know, um, just a lot of discussions. Um, that's when some of those, you know, secondary criteria or, you know, that, that aren't listed kind of come in. It's, it's not, you know, it's not um, smoke and mirrors. It's not, we're not nominating the Pope or anything. It's, um, it's just, you know, it's a very thought, it's a long, it's a long process for the judges to, to do that. So rest assured that we take a lot of time and, and um, you know, thought into that. We don't just look at coin or, or um, you know, anything like that. Um, and I don't want to make it sound like super mysterious because it's, you should be reading those criteria for the awards. That's really the key. Because um, that, that's, that's where you know we'll, we'll go down one criteria at a time. Okay, we have these teams are really close. Let's go one by one through their criteria and see how they meet. And see, you know, okay, team A is better in three of those. Team B is better in two of those. So we're going to pick team A because you know they met more of the criteria better. Um, so then we decide all the different awards, and then the, the people doing chairman's award come in. Ruin everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> typically, we don't. We, we get it pretty close to um, to final before I'll get to chairman's award in a second. You'll hear a whole presentation here after after me. But um, chairman's, of course, is the most important one, and so we have to kind of wait a little bit on that one, um, and it overlaps a lot with engineering inspiration. So, and those two are very important because they give you invitations places. And, and so we, we sometimes hold off a little bit on deciding those final ones. So the chairman's award would be for that. Um, any questions so far before I delve into something? What do you look at for rookie all-star? Um, so for the rookie awards, typically what I do as a judge advisor is I'll assign um, all the rookies to one group of judges, so that way they can make the decision um, themselves without having to have that big process. Um, rookie All-Star is, you know, the most like the Chairman's Award team or the most like an Engineering Inspiration Award team. So, um, you know, the more you can do outreach, uh, you know, I realize it's a big, it's a big play as a rookie team, but um, you can try to do some outreach if you have a plan, like a good strategic plan for the future. Um, if you have um, enthusiasm, and I don't mean you have to be cheering and jumping up and down and blowing air horns, please don't blow air horns. <laughs> 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 um, but, you know, if we walk up to your pit and you see a judge and like go hide in the corner in a toolbox, or, um, you know, if you're kind of like just indifferent judge shows up. Um, that happens to more than just rookie teams, by the way. Um, you, you know, the, the more you can sort of emulate those, those uh, um, uh, successful teams, which you, you can see videos, you can, you can talk to them, you know, talk to existing teams, 
network here with people, um, you know, find out what they've done that's been successful. Um, and, and All Star again is broad, so you're going to want to have a decent robot. It doesn't have to be the best. Um, <coughs> an attempt at outreach, an attempt at, um, like I said, that's strategic plan, um, entrepreneurship, some of that. So typically, and this is an insider judge thing on tonight, unless there is a tape recorder, we might shut that off. But, um, we have rookie all star and rookie inspiration, right? And kind of rookie all star is the you know the, the best rookie, the most chairman y rookie. Rookie inspiration is kind of second place. Um, honestly, it's it's a, unless there's a compelling story. So it's going to be a team, you know, certainly that that. Uh, you know it's good, and and we you know we see good potential growth. But with there's there's typically like four-ish rookie teams at an event, and so um, you know it's a, I think it's a way to encourage more rookies, give them something specific that they can you know take home and say look you know we were, we won an award at uh, at our regional, and then like, their community gets behind them and that kind of stuff. Any other questions? So there's a list of criteria for every award. Right. Is, is, uh, are any of the criteria weighted more than others? Or um, are they all equal? No and yes. Um, there's no official weighting, right? So it's criteria one through five. These are the criteria. Some judges may weight things a little more. Um, I think sort of the higher they are on the list, you know, like there's a bullet list of like five or six. Right. Those top bullets should be a little bit more, um, you know, heavily weighted. Um, judges really don't like to see mentors working a lot in the pits unless they're, uh, you know, with a, with a kid, um, even though that's not explicit anywhere. So, um, you know, that, that sort of factors in I don't know where that factors in as far as criteria go, but it's a it's an impression more than anything, um, you know. And, and judges are just like humans in that they'll have different preferences as, as to what they want to see. And, um, I can't tell you we're like a hundred percent agnostic, you know. Across, you know, some of them are just going to weigh things differently. <coughs> doesn't happen often, I would say. And part of the reason we team up experienced people with inexperienced people and, and have more than just one person decide to look at that fact right there. Yeah. You know, we try to, if one person is waiting for something too much, the other person sort of is encouraged to step in and, and speak up. So. I was just wondering that, like, I mean, you have a few teams that are really close, if it's like, well, they have this criteria and this one's more important. Yeah, no, it, it, there's nothing like that. Again, it's, it's more which team meets, like wins out, and yeah. more criteria. Okay. Any other questions? Um, you forget them, I yes. I'm sure we'll come back to this acceleration. Maybe I have the question. Yeah. So, on, on robot related awards, and, you know, you have, you're going through in the pits during the interview through, you know, maybe what mechanisms or what innovative type of design elements may be on the robot or what the essentially how the team read the game and what the robots designed to do. Um, how how much of the on field performance are you able to evaluate the, those same people that are looking and, and hearing the interview? How much of the on field stuff do they see, and how does the on field performance weigh? Here's, here's part two. Um, part two of that is we have judge observers. They're called or match observers or judges. So typically at an event we'll have one to two people at the scoring table watching the matches and we have a spreadsheet that keeps track of, you know, some particular, you know, like they, they watch the matches and see, oh that's sort of, they have a really good catcher or a really cool thrower or they're, they're, they score autonomous every time or troubles with this or, you know, they take those kind of notes and then They'll report out on Friday, because sometimes, you know, we'll have that list, right? And we'll say, hey, Max Durber, or whatever their actual name is, 
Um, <laughs> what do you tell me? Tell me about these teams. And they may say, "Oh yeah, that that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. This one never worked. Or this one, uh, or or hey, have you seen seventy one? You know they've been perfect. They're you know their score seventeen balls a or You know whatever, whatever. That is. So, so, so basically, basically, the match observers that are, are scouts just like right. teachers right. scouting. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, you all probably scout better than they do, yeah. frankly, because some of them won't learn the game until that Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> but they're going to be looking. You know, they're going to be looking for the same stuff. So. Um, and they're going to be much more focused on, um, you know, just flat out performance, because um, you know, one wins and losses that can be very dependent on your alliance. So we won't. We, we we take somewhat rankings are a little bit into account, but that would be like the ninth tiebreaker kind of order. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't remember mine. Okay, um, so as far as I think about like who I'm putting where on the team, does it make sense? I want to have you know a, a team centric person in the pit all day Friday until they talk to a judge, and then I can assume that they can know that it's possible that they'll come back. And it's very okay. possible, yeah, because um, we may forget which team we're talking about. Or we may have a detail, and they're like, are you sure that they raised $3 million? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, or we'll want to, you know, we'll want to go back and, you know, so one team, one judge may hear something different than another judge, and so we'll want to come back and clarify that. Or, or we may start actually in on some of those award-specific things on Friday afternoon, and then you definitely want someone there who can dive deep into things. If you can, if you can spare it, a machine person and a and a team person, spokespeople, or you know, one person that can do both. You know, I realize that it's probably usually your drivers or your, you know, so it is. It is kind of. Um, I understand it might be difficult. So for the robot awards, will those judges ever visit the pit while the robot is in there? They will definitely try to. Um, is it what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. We'll try to, you know, if we see that you're going to leave, we'll say, well, we're going to come back. Oh. You know, we know you have a match now. We don't want to interrupt that. Then they'll stop back by when you're back. Because um, we do, we will want to look, you know, more closely for, you know, welds and wiring and, you know, the actual like kind of stuff. So we don't just like look at it from afar and, ah, that looks beautiful. <laughs> for an airplane, that, I'm an aerospace engineer for an airplane that's called Still Speed. Means it looks good just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we want to see. We want to see more. Stuff. Any other questions? Uh, talk a little bit about specific awards. <coughs> so, oh, like, sorry, I got, I got one question. So, this is something that always it's always rumors flying around the pit, right? So, after awards is like, well, they didn't win that award because they won it in. Cleveland, or they won that award because they won it. Take your pick. I mean, you, you hear both, right? So, what what influences, if any, are there from teams attending? Uh, you know, the early weeks it doesn't matter, but the later right. weeks it does seem to have an impact. At least appearances, right? right? But I, I'm just curious what, what um, you're thinking. Turn that off again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did not. Typically, um, take past performance into account. There, there will be, there, I, I will say that with the following caveats, and that's engineering inspiration and rookie all star. Since those have bids, it, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do a thorough, like if the engineering inspiration, there are two teams that are kind of close, and one of them already won that at you know, an earlier regional, we'll likely choose the other team. Um, same thing with rookie. Now, if if it's still clearly one that's already won it, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give it to him again because we, real, we do realize that creates a, like a wild card probably. Right. Um, so we don't want to send the wrong team. You know, um, but
but if it's if it's pretty close and a toss up, we will we will do that. Um, we definitely don't have you know you guys are tracking things on uh, whatever their websites are anymore. I don't even remember. Um, I'm sure Chief Delphi and other they won here, they won there. You know we don't believe you. We had known none of that. Um, so uh, you know if you win quality at one place, you certainly can win it at another one. It's just very rare. Rare occurrences that we'll consider that probably maybe twice in my career. Um, any other questions? Okay, so some specific uh, things to know about specific awards. Uh, number one, uh, Dean's List Award. Um, obviously, you have to be nominated by your coach or mentor or team. Um, so if they don't do that, we're not going to be interviewing you for it. <laughs> we don't get to pick whoever we want. We only get to pick who your coaches want. Um, if you have been nominated, hopefully they've told you. <laughs> because we will be expecting to talk to you the day of the event. We'll expect, actually, we'll expect you on, um, on Thursday to sign up for a spot on Friday. Uh, and then we'll have you come and we'll talk to you. You know, and what the judges have is they have that essay that your um, your mentor or coach input into into Tim's one of the hymns website. Now. Um, and then we have the interview process. So again, it's a very it's a job interview. You know, you're you want to see what kind of role model you are. Um, and then what we do is we'll pick the I forget what they're called now finalists or read semi finalists from from that event. And then you go into the big pool, big national pool. Um, so we'll we'll provide comments on the website. You know, really strong in this, etc. Um, so that's Dean's list. Um, entrepreneurship requires a portal submission. So if you want to be considered that, you could have the best that you could have, better than Donald Trump's business plan. <laughs> I only said that to get the cheap political laugh. Um, <laughs> two years ago, that might have actually made sense. I mean, you'd giggle a little bit of drop, but now you really laugh at it. Um, you have to submit that plan through the website, through the portal. Um, otherwise, you know, if you come, if we come to you and you're like, oh, check out our business plan, we're, you know, we're well, the machine would be like, thank you, and then we'll be done because we, it's a definite requirement. Um, so you know, make sure. And that usually is, um, that, that one's usually decided on Friday. We have, you know, uh, somebody, an economics professor, or some, you know, again, a, 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 a real business oriented person will look over those, those business plans, narrow it down to a manageable number, and then he or she and a couple other people will go out and, and talk to your team. So the, this seems like a good idea, a good place to interject with the, uh, um, you can probably think if we come to talk to you about and start to ask you a lot of questions about a very specific topic, you can start to think, well, maybe you're on one of those lists, right? And so, um, you know, you may, whoever is your, you know, spokespeople, have to make sure they understand the criteria, because then they can help guide that discussion even further when we're asking a lot of questions about recruitment and, and uh, secession and, you know, the, Engineering inspiration kind of questions, right? So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, so, so that's entrepreneurship. Um, chairman's award. You're going to have a whole um, another talk, but from the judging side, um, again, we'll have a sign-up sheet on Thursday morning. So, um, come in and sign up, and if if it turns out that you have a match at one of those times. Um, and one of your people is a, a chairman's presenter. Um, a little bit of that is maybe poor planning on the team's part for having one person be so invested in having to do stuff. Um, the other thing is try to work with another team to trade spots if, uh, if that happens. Because we're not going to resolve it. We're going to expect you there at that time. Um, chairman's award again requires a portal submission. We read those beforehand, so hopefully we know a little bit about your team before you get there. Um, 
rookies are not eligible. So, you know, I, I, I would encourage you, I guess this is another rookie all-star question, uh, go through the process as if you were going to do chairman's award, but don't submit anything or don't sign up for a, um, I, I know as a, as a, if you have a NASA grant, it's required to, to um, act like you're a chairman's award candidate, but we can't, we, we, did, we can't interview. Because one of the criteria is sustained excellence, and it's hard to sustain excellence as a first year program. <clears throat> um, the Chairman's Award interview uh, make sure you have your video, and make sure you have the release form for the video um, with uh, royalty free music, all those kind of things. Um, <coughs> three people, I guess three people and a coach now. They changed the rules last year. Um, you know, you'll come in, you'll give your presentation, we'll ask questions. We have a feedback form that we fill out and give to you. Um, and it's kind of a scoring form as well. We have a similar form that's for scoring. Um, again, Chairman's Award probably has all fives, so we're again, gonna have to talk and differentiate um, between the winners on that. Um, first couple of years at, at Queen City, I had, you know, 10, 15 candidates this past season. I had 24, so we went in a Saturday. You may end up having a Saturday judging time spot. So keep an ear out if you're a chairman's candidate for sign-ups are now available. And then just run over there. I mean, don't run over there. That's, that's not safe. <laughs> but, but Thursday morning, maybe have someone just kind of like this. Hanging out by the pit, by the pit, the pit admin table, ready to pounce on Dean Award, Dean's award, and uh, he's listed the uh, chairman's award list. Yeah. All, all the pit admin people right now. Pit admin people hate you. I usually, I usually tell them we'll be there around ten, and it's like eleven thirty when I finally get there. But um, it's actually, it's better than that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, so along those lines. Uh, one of the things that, I don't know if it drives teams crazy or not, but I think it does, because they come and ask me when I'm tearing down the field, where is my chairman's stuff, right? How do I find it, where to go? And I'm like, I have no idea. It was pit admin and you're supposed to go pick it up at pit admin. You know, I don't know what to tell teams, and I don't know how to make the process better, but there's always a pile of two or three that we put in the, in the, in the uh, Boston family and send it on. So yeah, in terms of chairman's materials or any materials basically that you have, you know, a lot of teams might have a, a data sheet or a pamphlet or a book of, <laughs> of things. Um, my first, my advice to you first is don't expect to get that back. So don't give me anything that you don't want to lose. Um, because again, 50 teams, 50 books, 25 judges, minimal time. Chaos. We're likely to lose your valuable. You know, it's usually whatever the most valuable thing is um, for, for the team in terms of oh, we had the scrapbook for the last 42 years of our team. It's gone now. We just don't know where. Yeah, but it's, it's somewhere. Um, so you know, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not trying. We do our very best. Believe me, we, we we try to hold on to those things. We make multiple announcements that hey, it's available in the pits. All of that stuff will come back um, after the the event, right after, like right after the final match or the award ceremony. It's all there. We can't do it before because it has, you know, we have that feedback information. You know, if 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 you're the only team that didn't get their video back, hmm, wonder what they're going to do with that video. Uh, <laughs> play it at the, you know, for the winning team. Um, so so yeah, so. Um, Try to give us copies of something. Uh, in, in all honesty, all that information, you, you know, it, it be, again, be factual. Um, try to try to differentiate between kind of advertising, promotional stuff that you might hand out at a, a fundraiser or you might hand out at a, an outreach event. Um, that's cool, and you may have it displayed for us. Here's all the stuff we use to entice people to. You know, be interested in our team. We're not actually going to do much with that ourselves. Um, so 
there's really not a whole lot of point giving us a little bit little pamphlet. Things that are, are helpful would be um, like data sheets, like I mentioned. Um, if you have a single single sheet that has your a picture of your robot, some facts, um, things that you feel are creative or innovative in control, or things about your quality processes, that would be good to have on that sheet. Um, same thing with the team, highlight data. Um, you know, uh, Grace Professionalism, Pittsburgh, 2007, award, past awards that have been, uh, you know, you've had, or number of outreach events per year, number of demographics of the team, again, very factual information that we can, we can take back and help use to differentiate. Um, so you're almost saying that on the top of the package you want a cover sheet, mm -hmm. basically, you know, picture of the robot and those kind of details, right. like, like you do with a resume. Yeah, yeah, they're very. It's very you know product oriented kind of. It's not. We don't. We don't have time to look into a lot of detail. We're not going to read code. You know, we realize the code people on our team just love it, and we love them for loving it. But we don't. No. Some of us do, but um, you know, we're not going to delve into your C comments and, and that, or whatever language. I'm not even sure. um, so, so that's the portal-based awards. That have special criteria. Um, I think that's all I have. You have any questions or comments or concerns or I heard on wherever and I want to find out if that's true. Hey, I got screwed last year. <laughs> Whatever regional. I have, some, I have some questions. It's it's very broad, um, but just about sort of. Dean's list best practices. What what are you looking for in a dean's list team member? I feel like I'm. Are there any innovators in here? <laughs> yes. No? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's, there's three of us. Had a competition with yeah. someone from the innovators. There's going to be one of them winning a dean's list award. <laughs> so I want to know what they're doing. <laughs> um. Skip, can I help with that since I'm Please. chairman? Or no? Huh? Huh? I was a chairman. Uh. uh Dean's list judge last year. Well, <clears throat> I'll let you go second. Okay. <clears throat> Again, we're looking for, you know, role model examples. So they have to be enthusiastic. They have to be engaged. They have to be involved. Um, and we're going to look. We're going to prefer longer involvement. I won't say we're going to prefer necessarily, um, you know, kids who've progressed through all the levels of first doesn't hurt, um, just because that shows a long time dedication. We're looking for kids who've been impacted by first. So, um, you know, hey, I wanted, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought I was going to be work fast food all my life. And now I'm going to be an engineer. I'm going to MIT next year. Those kind of things. Um, Realize that that's not an obvious story. Um, it does happen, certainly. Um, and again, facts. They're all good kids. I, you know, I, I've met thousands of them, and I can test that fact. Um, but we're going to want to see, again, differentiation. Reasons why that kid is special. Or, um, you know, particular stories. I think that's the way you want to add. You're good. <laughs> I can tell you, you know, the, the kids that we nominate, um, it's not that we, are, I, I feel, it's not that we're really good at writing or they're really good at interviewing, it's the kids that we put up. The kids that we put up every year are the ones that are at every outreach event, that are the president of the team or some officer in the team. They're, they're every single day of practice. They're involved very heavily in one component or multiple components. Uh, those are the kids that usually win when we put them up. So it's not so much what are we doing, it's the fact that these kids are just phenomenal kids. And so we're, we're, I feel we're lucky to get these type of kids on our team. But we kind of develop them that way too from the beginning. So, like the last few kids that have gotten 
um, or exactly what you just said. They were in FLL, then they were in FTC, then they were in FRC. And so by the time they came up to our FRC team, they were you know, very entrenched in what FIRST is about and wanted to go out and do the outreach. They were the ones going out and finding the outreach for us. They were doing, they were basically leading the team. And so those are the kids that we put up, and that's why I think that we keep getting nominees. He left off the genetic engineering part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that won't happen. Yeah, but I, I think, like, my biggest fear is that, like, we're doing a bad job of writing the Dean's List nomination. So you know, we, like that's... When we, write the lit, when we write the nomination, what we focus on is, is the criteria in there and how to very factual, very quickly put every single part of that. So one of the parts that I've judged in the past before I was part of the innovators, one of the things that, that I noticed a lot of kids miss is the entrepreneur part, mm -hmm. right? That is the most that I've seen missed. So what do they do outside of FIRST that they've taken that FIRST knowledge and applied it somewhere else? So if that's not really brought into that, it's really hard to compare against somebody who has that all in their essay. Everybody that's nominated does great things. I mean, they, they all do outreach. They all are leading their team. They're, I mean, they wouldn't be nominated if they weren't. Uh, but that's usually the piece that's missing. You said something very important, short, factual, Things that address the criteria. Yeah. 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 Get rid of the fluff. Just it's short and factual. The more facts and more information you put in, the better right. chance. What's that? Yeah, we, exactly. we actually get that a fair, a frequent, fairly frequent criticism is well, other coaches just a better writer than yeah, yeah. Um, they, they make organized the writing and provide the data better, but it's not a you know it's not an essay. So just just to recap, um, you know, be there, be there in your bits. That's the number one thing. And uh, be interested when the judges come up. Um, let let them talk to the kids. Um, and just give us all the facts that you can take. We have a lot of engineers judging, right? So they don't care about emotions. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them. Yeah. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up and start start moving to the next round. Do you have any questions? Yeah. That you want to follow up on?